Hello YouTubers, how's it going? All right, I'm back to do another tutorial. Uh, this evening I'm going to do an all black and white. And the reason that I'm gonna do an all black and white is because when I first started spray painting, the very beginning, about two years ago, I found that colors were a little bit intimidating to work with. And so I wanna take the beginner spray painter through the whole gamut of things that kind of I went through and hopefully speed up your process so that you can jump into a really fun uh, hobby. And who knows, maybe you'll have a natural talent and it can become lucrative as long as it doesn't interfere with your joy of uh, painting. And so today we're gonna do a moon with a snowy mountain scene and a mountain lake. So I've got my gloves, I've got a well ventilated area, so I'm not gonna wear my uh, mask uh, so that I can do this tutorial. And here we go. We go ahead and start with my gloss white. Now I wanna put the moon right around here. Give it a good shake. That doesn't wanna spray well. Here we go. Gonna spray there for that. So I go with my white, then I'll go with my black there. And white again. And then I'm gonna make a little moon next to it as well. Kind of fun to make an extra little planet or put a little extra something, something on there. So that'll give it some flair. Now I'm going to use my magazines today for these. This one I'm going to do a different texture, so I'm going to slide it across. So it has kind of a smooth and liney look, maybe like some canyons or something like that. And I'll use a bag for the big one to give it a different texture than that. That looks pretty nice. I think I'll go ahead and brighten up this side with my Color Place White. And I, after I shake it often, uh, if I remember, I'll spray it to the side so that I don't get any, so I have a nice even spray. I don't get any kind of, you know, blobs on the paper that I don't want there. So I'm going to take the white and I'm going to shade this part of the moon, a nice bright white. And since I have the light coming from this way and the shade this way, I will do this one as well, just a little bit there. And same thing on the back half. Get a little bit of a little bit of shade there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry, uh, and then I will move forward. Be back in just a moment. All right, you guys, I'm back. Uh, this is pretty dry, dry enough to continue here. So let me go ahead and grab a planet stencil. One moment. This one for this, this one for this. Go ahead and place that and place this one. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a two times gloss black. We're gonna cover almost the entire page here. Again, a nice even spray, making sure you get around the planets really well. Good job of weight. That doesn't fly off there. A little about right there. That's where we'll put our water and maybe a tree line. 
give it a little bit of depth and some more beauty. All right. So I'm gonna dry it off a little bit with some flame. If you guys do this at home, if you guys do this where you're painting or whatever, just please be careful. I mean, obviously I'm using a clear paint so I don't get any, you know, other colors on this and a torch so that I have a wide flame. I've used a lighter before. Uh, the flame's too small, I either burn my hand or something like that. So uh, you wanna hold the flame about eight to 12 inches above your painting and just so that it gives it some good heat so it can dry faster. If you do get it on your painting and something starts on fire, you can blow it out. It won't harm your painting. Um, it could, if you leave it on there too long, it could bubble it up and you can either leave it and incorporate it into your painting or fix it. So, or you can start yourself on fire. No harm, no, no harm done. No harm, no foul. You can see I got the painting on fire as well, but it's pretty dry. So I can go ahead and, maybe I shouldn't try that at home, huh? <laughs> I can go ahead and do my stars. Again, I flick, I spray it under my fingers, flick it off to get the big stuff off, and then put a nice star, star mist over it. And there's a huge spider. I'm gonna kill that one moment. And when I say huge, I mean that spider was like a baby tarantula. Yeah, that big. Don't get me wrong, I don't like to kill creatures. Just spiders. I've had a really bad spider bite on my finger before and it like, it was gross. And it hurt. All right, that's a pretty good cover. Now we'll come in and shape our mountains. So first of all, let's do a reveal here. And mess it up. Here's the little moon. That turned out pretty neat. And that one, both of them turned out pretty well. So we'll take the, my black here, this is the color place black, the lighter black, and I'm just gonna do a faint outline of my mountains. So I'm gonna have this moon here, just behind the mountains. Maybe getting ready to rise. So you can see the faint outline of my mountains. Now I'll come back. And I don't want to get a lot of overspray uh, up onto the stars. It'll take their the sharpness away. And so I'm going to hold this up here and just kind of deflect it a little bit. I also don't want to get a lot of overspray on my moon. It'll definitely take the sharpness out of that, the brightness. All right, so now I have the outline, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill that outline in. All right, you guys can probably see that pretty well. I did get a new iPad. Um, to record better in 4K and with kind of a better studio so uh, I could get a better picture for you guys. So hopefully uh, you guys can see that well. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and take my two times gloss white. I've got my shield again here. And I'm gonna cover these completely, the mountains, just right on the line of the silhouette there. So just little sprays when I'm trying to get over spray.
And again, I'm gonna just cover those with white all the way. Try not to let it pull up, like right here, you might be able to see it pulled up. And that's okay, but it can create a little bit of, of a mess and sometimes not exactly the detail that you want. We'll have that peak going way up there. All right, so this is really cool. I thought the first time I did it, I thought it was amazing. I still think it is. Um, so if your paint dries in between when you go to pull up paint, you can always use your clear. Um, I have clear right here and you can re-wet it and pull it off. Right now it's pretty wet. So I'm gonna use a plastic bag. I'm gonna stick my hands in the plastic bag and I'm gonna go right along the line of where I sprayed the white and the black. And so the harder I press, the more snow I'll pull off. There you can see that. Again here. I'll grab a new bag now. You don't want to use a really soppy bag. Uh, you want to change out your bag so you don't get kind of black paint where you don't want it, so on and so forth. Just climb up here. Give me that peak. We'll pull a little bit more off there. All right. Now you can just kind of touch it where you want. You know, leave your snow where you want to leave your snow. It's your painting. Uh, whatever whatever you're satisfied with, whatever looks good to you. So I think that, that that's a pretty good, pretty good set of snowy mountains. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry for probably 15 minutes. Uh, look like about five seconds to you. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, I'm back. Uh, while while I was waiting for this to dry, I took a, the color place black and did a little mist to separate what's going to be the water, uh, a little shade, and then I took the color place white and did a little mist of white, uh, giving it a little bit of depth and separation. So now I'm gonna use a, a, a small paintbrush um, and I'm gonna have, I have my black tin here. I have tins with different colors that I use so that I don't mix them a lot unless I mean to. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and use black in here and I'm gonna do a little tree line uh, these are just little pine trees it gives it a little bit of depth and really it's there's no uh, not a lot of distinct characteristics about these pines they are kind of far off in the distance and so all I'm doing is taking my paintbrush and just going up and down really lightly just keeping the tops of the trees up above the black a little bit and going back and forth I love kind of losing myself in the painting it's very relaxing it's a very peaceful meditative experience if you allow it I do a lot of my, I guess you could say, deeper thinking about life and kind of the meaning of things and get myself refocused with this hobby a lot. It's really good to have great hobbies to keep yourself grounded and focused and busy. Uh, I think this hobby has actually kept me out of trouble. I used to run around with people that I guess you could say I, I did less than my best with and um, since I've found some great hobbies and a few life skills uh, I have dove in and stayed away from those guys and they're not bad people just 
caught up into things that were not very healthy and got myself into trouble. But since I've developed a few hobbies, uh, playing guitar, painting, uh, things like that, I've been able to lose myself in my painting and think about life. And, and life's so beautiful. There's so many beautiful people out there with great hearts, wanting to do great things. And, you know, dur during COVID-19, it's almost like you have to have a hobby you know, or something. You know, you kind of stuck at home a lot, or if you're smart, you're staying at home, trying to stay away from COVID. And it's unfortunate that we had to be, you know, for the majority away from our families during Thanksgiving. How was your guys' Thanksgiving? Hopefully it was really nice and you had a lot to be grateful for and got to spend some time with your family. You know, there's a lot of people in Kansas City just down the road here that are really struggling, less than fortunate. And really wish I could have gone down there and helped them this year, but with COVID, it's kind of a scary ordeal. So we are putting some Christmas packages together for some people in need. That'll be, that'll be fun. We'll just have to figure out a way to do it so that we're safe as well. So almost done with this tree line here. It's just a back and forth motion. I'm gonna come back over it a little bit and just kind of add a couple of a couple of sharper tops, make it look a little bit more realistic. You know, one of the things about I mean this is off in the distance, so it doesn't have to like I said, the, the distinctions don't have to be perfect, but just sharpen it up a little bit. One of the things about uh, paintings too that I've really enjoyed is I've gone through my life, you know, as a perfectionist or trying to do things perfect and getting upset with myself when things weren't exactly perfect. And what I found about painting, why it's been such a cool hobby for me too, is that, you know, I make mistakes all the time, or at least what I deem mistakes, but I found that I can turn them into uh, some of the more, I don't know, some of the greater parts of the piece. Uh, sometimes I get compliments on the pieces where there was mistakes and I'm like, wow, you know, whether that's me taking more time to fix it or just kind of letting it be and letting the, uh, the viewer use his or her imagination to spruce it up, whatever that looks like, I don't know. But, you know, I've, I've, I've I guess a piece of wisdom that I've found that ties in with that is kind of funny, but, Life is 10% what happens to us and 90% what we do with it. And so I can cruise along. I guess you can kind of uh, equate that with pain. You know, I can cruise along and something can happen. You know, I could start on fire. <laughs> That's what not to do, by the way. Um, just giving you a video of kind of what you can do and what you can't. But really though, you know, 10% what happens to us and 90% what we do with it. So there's an accountability piece there. But there's also just a, hey, it's a painting, right? So, but you know, it's true. And you can have any number of things happen to you in your life. Somebody can come up and hurt you or, I don't know, any number of things, car accidents. And I've been on both sides of car accidents. You know, I know how that is. And I didn't always choose to do the best, the right thing with it or the right thing for me. Um, now understanding that you know it's it's my choice what i do with these things that happen to me in life my life's been very peaceful and very good and yeah i run into problems all the time things i've got to face life you know reality you know managing bank account buying a car that i thought would be suitable for a family and uh, making making decisions you know hard decisions but that's life, right? All right, so the tree line is basically done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come back through and I'm gonna nip that bottom with a shade of black. See that there, it covers up the bottom there. 
Now, I'm going to use some white. Give it a light, nice mist. Now we're going to do the water. So let me throw on a pair of gloves here. There's a lot of different ways to do water. I like to use my finger. I feel like I can manipulate the, my hand, my fingers. I feel like I can manipulate the water a little bit easier. Some people like to use, you know, a firm uh, piece like this. You can put your color down, whatever color your water's gonna be. In this case, it will be black and white. Um, and you can put it down and you can just adjust your pressure and make the ripples and that works pretty nice. Uh, and I'll, I'll do a tutorial on that as well. But for today, we're just gonna do, use my finger. I think it's easier. And so with black and white water, it's kind of tricky. I mean, you can, what you want is you want contrast. So I'm gonna put some black down. And then I'm gonna spatter the majority of it with white. Now often when you're doing water, it'll dry fast. And so I just put clear on it right off the bat, keep it really wet. I shake my can the whole time. Do the rest of this with clear, give it a nice gloss. Now I take my fingers and three, four fingers, whatever it is, and I just hold the painting and I just Go back and forth. It's a little sticky, a little dry, so add some clear here. Just adjust the pressure with your fingers. All the way across the page there. And it's a technique, you know, you can lift up your fingers a little bit and hit it and kind of makes it look a little bit more like rougher water. However you want to do it. You, and like I said, it's your painting and this is just the one general way of doing it. So there you have it. I'm going to turn this around, show you guys what we have so far. All right, and I think just to finish this off, um, nothing so long, I'm just going to put some rocks right here. And so so that it looks more like a, a surrounded mountain lake in the winter, maybe January in the high Uenas. Except there's two moons, the high Uenas on some other planet. <laughs> I don't know. Creativity, right? Okay, so for the rocks, very simple. I'm gonna just go like this where I want them. I'm gonna fill that in with the black. Go back over with my white. Take the plastic bag. We'll just hit this line again, just like we do the mountains. Like that. Then I'm gonna grab painting tool and just come over it. Now with the painting tool, you can use different pressures and you'll pull different amounts of paints off. So you just don't wanna swipe it all the way across or something like that, I mean, unless, unless you do want to. But if you want to make it look realistic, you can just kind of follow some of the lines that are already on there. And 
and make it look rocky if that's what you're going for. I like to have a rotating table, it makes it a little bit easier. And I just bought a little lazy Susan, you know, spinner on Amazon for I think $12 and found a couple of pieces of wood. And very convenient, very nice to have. There we have it, just some rocks, kind of gives it some depth and makes it look like it's enclosed is a mountain lake. I'm gonna put a little bit more black inside of these. Give it some shade there. Adds a little depth. Go back over it one more time. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Those of you that have subscribed, I appreciate it. Keep, uh, keep tuned, I'll have some more material out soon. Uh, I hope you guys have a really happy Thanksgiving and, and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas with your families and just enjoy yourselves. The world's kind of crazy right now and well, I guess the, the, uh, the idea is to be happy and to find joy in this life. And so, you know, find a hobby, find some, some things you can do with your family or things you can do to you know, ease your mind and be in solace, kind of like what I do with painting, and, and just enjoy yourselves all over, over the holidays. Don't let COVID or anything else or anyone else get to you. Just enjoy yourselves and have a good holiday season. For those of you that haven't subscribed and you like what you see, please subscribe. Um, press like, share with your friends. Uh, if you have, if you want to learn more, I'll be doing more tutorials very soon. Let me give this a signature here. I appreciate all your comments too, uh, suggestions, things that I can do better, uh, any kind of painting that I can do for you, please let me know. Um, hit this with black, and I would love to give it a shot and try it. I also love the suggestions. I am only two years in, and there's just so many, so much talent out there. I love learning from other people. And there it is. You guys, have a wonderful day.